I love welcome, I treasure in every verse. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm your host, author and Bible teacher, Kevin Madison. Thank you for joining us today. All right, friends, well, we're back and we're going to be continuing our series, uh, The New Birth. And we're getting to this section right here. And this is titled, Jesus is our only hope of obtaining the glory of God. Now, folks, I, I really need you to, to understand this uh, as the scriptures pointed out. Mankind has two problems. One, he's born into sin and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Two, God is holy and righteous and he's just in all his judgments and he has determined that everyone who has sinned must die. And if you remain a sinner in your sin, God has declared that he will cast you into hell. You say, Kevin, how can you start a message out talking about hell, friend? Because do you really do you want to go? Do you want to go there? No, I mean, you worry about me and whether or not uh, I'm starting a message off talking about hell. Friend, look, I want everybody, every single person to be saved without exception. The question is saved from what? Saved from hell, man. Saved from the wrath of God, which is hell. So when we think about what we're doing here, you know, you, you say, all right, what, what do we do? Then we must get rid of our sins and we must obtain the glory of God. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. And this is according to the scriptures, folks. Again, don't worry about what I say. I'm talking about my personal opinion. My personal opinion is junk because that's all it is. It's an opinion. The scriptures are God's word. That's what you worry about. Now, let's talk about the scriptures and what, what is there, what is the scriptures about? The scriptures, all of it, it's only about three things. don't have that particular presentation up, so I'm gonna have to go to the board and tell you what, what it's about. So the scriptures. Three things, folks. That's it. All right. One. Reveal God's attributes. That's the first thing God is doing. So, when you're reading the scriptures, pay close attention to everything that's happening. These are not stories, folks, just so that you can go around and say, oh, I want to be like Abraham. I want to be like David. I want to be like Paul. I want to no, man, that, listen, those are simply illustrations to get you to understand how God is or who and who God is. How God treat people 
in who God is. It's all about revealing his attributes. So when, you, when you're reading the book, that's what you have to see. Abraham did this. How did God lead Abraham there? What did God do when Abraham made a decision and it was the wrong decision? How did God treat Abraham after he made that wrong decision? Everything that you read, you should be thinking about what God has done, is doing. It's not about Abraham. It's not about Adam. It's not about Satan. It's not about Daniel and David and John and Peter and Paul. It's not about any of those people, folks. The book is about God. When you're reading it and you're telling people about the scriptures, what did Jesus say about the word of God? He told the Pharisees, if, yeah, let me find this, because uh, this, is, this is so important. Um, it, it's in John 8. But yeah, it's in John 8. Let's, let's go there. Because I, I really, really, really need you to see this. And he told it again in the book of Luke. So I'm going to go first to John. Watch this. Look at what he tells the religious people. And this is what, this, this is what really, really just, I, I get amazed sometimes when I'm talking to fellow believers and they're more interested in people, characters in the book than they are of the author of the book who wrote it about himself and his plan and his son. Now, look at, look at, look at what he says. Talks about Abraham and all that stuff. And he, <laughs> he goes and he starts talking about Moses, right? And he talks about Abraham's seed Moses, come on. So you guys, those who are familiar with the scriptures, you know what I'm looking for. Uh, he says where, watch, uh, Moses. Oh, I'm sorry, folks, I gotta look it up. Okay, so let, let's, let's do this. Let me, let me look it up. And I, cause I, I really want to get to this. This, oh, he's talking about searching the scriptures. That's why I can't find it in chapter eight. Cause it's not in chapter eight. Sorry folks, it's in chapter five. Okay. All right, so it's in John 5 uh, and 39. Okay, so look at this. And the Father himself who sent me has testified me. You, and he can say this about everybody, have neither heard his voice at any time. Now, Jesus is saying this about everybody. No one has ever heard the voice of God, nor seen his form. Who have they heard? And who's this person talking in, in the Old Testament? It was Jesus. Who would the angels see? They were seeing Jesus. But you do not have the Father's word in you. How do you know that? Because he's God. Because whom he sent, him you do not believe. Who did he send? God sent himself. You, you 
search the scriptures. They had the right Bible. They had the right scriptures. They were reading the right scriptures every day and teaching the people every Saturday. This is why I keep telling you all, just because you're going to church, just because you're reading the scriptures, just because you're doing all this religious stuff and on the outside, it look like you are saved. But Jesus says, you do not have his word abiding in you. got that? Just because people are religious, whether you can call them evangelicals, you can call them Catholics, you can call them Baptists, I don't care what you call them. These were religious people. They had the right one. They had the right Bible. They were even reading it properly but they wasn't saved. For in them, them, yes, the scriptures, in the scriptures, you think you have eternal life. They thought they had life simply because they were doing religious stuff. Just because they were moral, Morality has absolutely nothing to do with eternal life. You don't get life because you live a moral, obedient life. It's not do morality. That's not the new birth. And these, these, yeah, the scriptures. And their writers, or they, this is the writers of the scriptures, which testify of me. Do you get it? So, what do you need? Do you need the right scriptures? Do you need to be religious and moral? Do you need correct behavior? Jesus said, in that, there is no eternal life. This points to life. You are not willing to come to me. For what? Life. Life is not in the scriptures. Life is in the living word. The scriptures simply point you to the living word. You can be as moral as you want, friend. And I've told this before, and I'm going to say it again. You could be born from conception and morally never, ever commit one single sin. And when it comes time to judgment after you die, God will cast you into hell. Why? Because salvation don't come through morality. Salvation don't come through good behavior. Salvation don't come through you obeying the scriptures. Jesus said, if your righteousness don't exceed that of the Pharisees, what do you mean exceed that of the Pharisees? They were obedient to the scriptures. They were doing everything or trying. Remember what Paul said? He said, concerning the law, he was a Pharisee. What? Blameless. You understand what he said? Man, I did everything in my power, in my behavior, to obey the law was the scriptures, right? That's the only scriptures that was there. 
He said he was blameless. Every other Pharisee could have said the same thing. And they did. But what did Jesus tell him? You're not willing to come to me to have life. Got it. The scriptures lead you to a person. That's the gospel. The gospel has nothing to do with morality. The book isn't written to tell you how to live. The point of the book is to point you to life. It's to tell you how to get life. Without life, you cannot live. You're dead in trespasses and sins. Dead. And all you can produce is dead, what? Behaviors. So if you remain dead, the only thing the dead produce is dead behaviors. No matter how good it look, no matter how moral it looks, in God's eyes, it will always be dead. You need life. Don't get that by changing your behavior. You're going to find yourself going to hell. Talking about being moral. And you don't get life. The life is in the me. Christ Jesus the Lord. I want to show you one more, and then we're going to get to the slide. And this is in Luke. Um, I think, and I may be wrong again, folks. <laughs> uh, I think it's in Luke uh, 15. Let's see if I write this down. And I might not be. Uh, no. I think it's... Hey, so I got more chapters in Luke than that, huh? Than that. Yeah, here we go. It's 9 and 15, I can tell you that. Oh, here we go. 24, folks. All right. Now, look at this. They're on the way. Now, this is the disciples of Jesus Christ. And these were faithful Jews who were obeying the law. All the Jews that was following Jesus Christ, all the disciples that were following Jesus Christ, were faithful to the law. Okay, now I don't know that because they were with Jesus Christ and He was faithful to the law. So He's He's Jesus pops up and you know, well pops up He shows up when He had two of the disciples traveling to uh, Emmaus and they were just going about talking about all the things that happened the death of Jesus Christ. They didn't they didn't know He was raised from the dead. So they're just going around conversing and Jesus walked up to them and. And he kept them from knowing him. Look, Jesus restrained, folks. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> what did Jesus look like when he showed up with these two guys? He looked like the same Jesus that was there before the cross. But look at what it says here. And as he drew near, he restrained their eyes from seeing him. They were looking right at him. And he kept them from recognizing him. Friend, that's power. Anyhow, so he's talking about all those things and what happened. And they, they sort of explain what was going on. And they were talking about Jesus, right? And then he come. And look at this, folks. They tell him what happened. And look at what he tells them. Then he said to them, oh, foolish ones. He didn't call them fools. He just said, hey, you foolish Wow. Slow of heart. To do what? Believe in all. That's people's problems. This is, they didn't understand the scriptures. Why? Because they didn't apply all that the prophets have spoken. 
all that the apostles have spoken, they went in there and they were selectively taking whatever they wanted. That's when people get in trouble. Read the whole book. Apply the whole book. Apply the whole theme of the book. What is that? God is revealing his attributes. Folks, please, I keep begging you all, don't select what you want out of the book. It's a complete book. Read the whole thing. Ought not Christ have suffered these things to enter into what? His glory. Whose glory? Christ is glory. The only person to have glory, folks, is God. And beginning, listen, beginning at who? Moses. How does Moses begin? Genesis. He began at Genesis. And what did he do? He went through all. Who did that? Jesus, God. In order to show them the complete picture, what did he do? All the scriptures that was available to them at that day, none of the New Testament stuff was there, and neither were the Gospels. By the way, the Gospels are not the New Testament. Okay, most of it, because the New Testament don't start till after the testator died. Meaning, when you're reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you have to understand that everything that happens before the resurrection is Old Testament, and it is under the law. So please make sure when you're reading the, the, the Gospels, everything before the resurrection, you need to understand that it is in the law. The law still applies. Okay, so beginning at Moses, what is that, Genesis? <laughs> he started at Genesis and he go through all the prophets. Listen, folks, that's Malachi. Jesus took them through every single book that was written. Why did he do that? He, Jesus, expounded. It took Every single book for Jesus to expound to them what? All, 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 <laughs> all, all, come on. That is the scriptures. All what? The scriptures. The things concerning what are the scriptures about? Jesus. It ain't about Abraham. It's not about Adam. It's not about Daniel. Don't come telling me about the lion's den and leave out Christ. Don't come telling me about the fiery furnace and leave out Christ. Don't come telling me about Adam and leave out Christ or Abraham or Joseph or Moses, or any of these characters you see in the book, and you leave him out, why? Because Jesus said, the person who wrote the book said, from Moses to Malachi is about me. It's about me. Oh, not me, Christ. So when you're reading all this stuff, what are you reading? When you read Proverbs, when you read Song of Solomon, when you read Ecclesiastes, when you read Ruth, when you read Judges, when you read the Torah, when you read the Psalms, when you read all the prophets, Nehemiah, Ezra, Esther. When you read those books, are you just reading a story? All. All. 
Oh. Oh, what, Kevin? All the scriptures. What about the about him? If you read this book, any part of it, and you see anyone else, you're not reading it right. And you're not going to understand it. Why? Because it's not about anyone else. It's about Christ. He said to them, O oh, foolish ones, slow of heart to believe all that the scripture said about who? About me. I don't know what else to tell you. If you go in a book and you find somebody else, then you're looking at the wrong person. Watch. <laughs> One more thing. I want to show you this. Watch this. He expounded about himself. Then they drew near the village and went, he was going to go further, but they constrained him abide with us and all this good stuff. Now, as he came in the past and he sat with them, and he broke bread and he blessed it and broke and gave to them. Watch this. Look. Look what happened. Then. Then. When Jesus did something, there are And listen, they knew him. You say, oh, yeah. They, they recognize his face. No, man. That's not what he's talking about. That's, that's a small part of it. If that's all you see in that, then that, that, listen, I'm not criticizing you. What I'm telling you is, you have to read the whole book. What are they talking about specifically? They tell you right here. Look. Did not our heart burn within us? Why? Because they recognize the face of the man, Jesus Christ. While he talked to us about what? The scriptures, man. While he opened the scriptures to us. What is it about? God revealing his attributes. God revealing his reconciliation plan. His redeemer. That is it. That's it. You want to know what the scriptures is about. That's it, right here. What do you see? I see Christ. What do you see? I see Christ. What do you see? I see Christ. Why do you think my ministry is called treasure in every verse? Who's the treasure you think I'm talking about? I want and desire no other treasure 
I will seek no other treasure because there is no other treasure.